this is from part of our website. I live here, I vote here. And uh, this is a campaign I'm going for, let's say, at least uh, five, six years with that name. Um, the local play I want to present you is the Freiburg Voting District, 100% existing now for 20 years. And our issues are democracy, political participation, and migration history. Then there is the German network, We Vote, We Wählen. And there is a European player, the newest player of voting rights for all residents, RA is a network on the European level. If we look at Freiburg, um, our central um, principle for the question of how to reach the voting rights for all is we don't wait, we vote. So what we do, and that's what we are known for most, is the way, the method of symbolic elections. That means we have parallel voting on election day. So we open um, in Freiburg, and that happened in other cities as well. We open 50 to 20 polling stations on the election day. They are run by initiatives, associations, the Turkish uh, community, the Brazilian community, the migrant council, the Ghana Union, so different initiatives organize the polling station. We have the same election procedure as in the official election. We have same candidates, same lists. So it is same day with the same lists. Uh, people who have no voting right can vote here. We have additionally a referendum uh, going on at the same polling stations where people who have a voting right can um, give a yes or a no to the question if they are in favor of introducing the voting rights because we need the support of the people who have a voting right already as well. A very important point at the end is that we don't uh, throw away the, the, the ballot sheets. Um, we take the sheets where people have voted and we hand them over to the elected officials and we tell them, this is the mandate of your voters. They have voted for you. So do something for them that next time their vote really does count. I show you here some pictures. This is part Hallo of a promotion video uh, for crowdfunding. If you see weiß, how this symbolic election is uh, uh, organized and does look like. These are our ballot boxes formerly transporting olive olives from Greece. Now they are transporting votes uh, to the central polling station on election Sunday. And you see here some people at the polling station and uh, people who give their votes. This is in front of a refugee camp. And um, so the associations attract their people. It was 10% of the population in 2017. And as Sanat was describing, it's 14% of the adult population who is excluded from that democratic process. This is a picture from uh, Nuremberg and Berlin because we are not alone in this world and even not in Germany on that issue. And we are active on the European level. We uh, meet partners like in Florence or Padova. We go to our twin towns of Freiburg and we look for initiatives we, which are interested in the same field. And uh, we need money to have time and to print posters and uh, ballots uh, sheets. So we one method is to promote the issue on crowdfunding to collect money. We, this is what we try to do to have some little resources, but of course that's not a big, really big, big help. Um, okay, in Germany, it's 14% as it was described before. Um, this is a little flyer we were using in different cities in Germany in the German wide network. We are there and we vote. We try to be as, um, um, multilingual as possible and as we have translators to help us to translate uh, our information our flyers because uh, giving the language showing the language is as well to show and to understand that uh, people uh, want to be addressed because we find out that many people think uh, voting is nothing of their business because they have no voting right in the German white network in the last uh, campaign in September last year there were about 14 cities who were using symbolic elections as a method. Some others choose other methods like panel discussions, uh, videos, workshops, 
but um, the central point where we meet is that it is a joint campaign on federal level. We use a joint design and method, mainly the uh, symbolic election. We want to be visible as a political actor and demonstrate the voter potential. We want to have a low barrier for people to participate. They can come on election day and just give their votes. They don't have to register for that. Uh, we coordinate the campaign on national level, yes, but of course, as well on state level. And uh, it's realized on local level and every initiative decides what is the appropriate method and way to promote the issue. And we are party politically neutral. Here you see some logos of the German White Network. Um, and the main group is um, state organizations of migrant councils in the different states. So it's about seven or eight uh, state organizations who represent the migrant councils in these states, which are in the cities. And uh, last year, we were very happy to see other actors uh, to appear and be active on the issue, like the cultural organization Federal, uh, the many, die vielen, they were really doing a great promotion for the issue and nicht ohne uns 14, I think was a very helpful and very successful campaign, not only online, in, in, in the media, in debates. So we are really happy for the uh, input as well they give to the issue. And we found out there are others active, like in Cologne, there was a, a federal migration election. This is the result of our federal election uh, in 2021 in September. So you see a majority of green social democrats and the CDU quite, quite good. But of course the RFD is at nearly zero, is under 1%. Uh, we had 4,700 voters participating and um, the federal Bundestag, that's, that's what it, uh, how it does look uh, today. But if the votes of the migrants would count, uh, there would be less people and uh, it, the coalition building would have been much easier. On the uh, European level, you see green countries and red countries. The red countries are the ones where there is no voting right for non-EU citizens. We always should keep in mind that there is a big progress that EU citizens everywhere in the EU can vote locally. And uh, we were uh, a group of people from basically states where there is no voting right for non-EU citizens. So these are the activists and they are, for example, in Geneva, nearly 50% have no voting rights, but they have a, a passive voting right. They can vote, but they cannot be elected, the non-citizens. This is Basel, a city where a third to 40% have no voting right in the city. This is Bari in the south of Italy after their symbolic election. They're absolutely great campaigners. They gather a lot of people. This is a, uh, in France, the Mohammed was there before. It is a big network all over in France and active for 50 years. You saw Freiburg. This is uh, Vienna in Austria. SOS Mitmensch is an organization that is campaigning for 10 years with symbolic elections, and they are growing and infecting other states. And this European network introduced a new international day on the calendar. And this is the International Day of Voting Rights for All on the 26th of April, as well today, as well this year. And um, we choose that day because it's the day when the women in France in 1914 were demonstrating for their voting rights with symbolic elections. And uh, it is important to know the history of movements and we see that there is a connection to the women rights movement, uh, voting rights movement as well. As well, there is, a, there is a migrant history of political activism. This is the parliament of immigrants that was voted for in symbolic elections in 1964. And this was in the area of Stuttgart where um, a parliament was elected out of immigrants. And this is a very strong sign of political activism. They were very successful and they are part of our legacy as well as 
the workers uh, who were asked to come to Germany were very successful on the field of the companies. So in 1972 in Germany, uh, they reached together with the unions in Germany that on the, for the companies, the representatives can be immigrants on the, and they can vote and be candidates and become representatives of the company workers. Um, in the same way as the Germans, so the passport doesn't uh, has any role in the question who has a voting right. And um, this campaign kept going in the 80s, and there was a strong movement. And then the reform model of migrant councils, advisory migrant councils, did break this movement. But there is one last word now of a very successful uh, movement that uh, was... Um, gaining the voting rights for a city, New York. Uh, Lara was talking about 900,000 people in London who, who, who could gain the voting right in New York. Um, over 800,000 people um, will gain the voting rights after a bill passed of um, the city council in December last year and was accepted by the mayor, let's say two and a half weeks ago and in New York, 800,000 people will have the right to vote in um, January next year. Uh, of course, there are legal problems maybe, but the city council has voted for yes. And I want to hear you for the last minute, Pierina Sanchez, who is an elected uh, city councilor in future. She was not at this um, city council meeting that took place in the building behind that scene. And it was like an hour before the city council meeting took place and she was addressing uh, the group uh, who was campaigning uh, with the, the coalition, Our City, Our Votes. I am here as Pierina Sanchez, that's the name they gave me. And I am, <laughs> and I am city council member elect for district 14 in the Bronx. <laughs> we are an immigrant community. We are 45% foreign born. And so many of us do not have that right to vote in city and state and federal elections. But today, today this city council is going to make history because they are going to vote and they're gonna change that in the city of New York. Yeah. So I just wanna thank you on behalf of my immigrant community, on behalf of so many of us who are all shades, right? We come from West Africa, yeah. we come from East Africa, we come from Latino America. We are here from all over the world. And in this city, we're standing up at a time where voting rights are under attack, at a time where immigration reform seems to be at a standstill in Washington, D.C. We are standing up here in New York City. And we say, you know what? We got this. Yeah. We're gonna make it happen here in New York City. We're gonna prove to you that we can. And as New York City goes, so will go many other major cities, and so will go the United States of America. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. That was it. Thank you.